Rub up your engines! There's an Audi owner that he found his basic HVAC, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, was paywalled after he pressed the button to turn it on. So he couldn't even get the basic functions. Now, it was an Audi e-tron their electric car and it had a sink button that's something you got to pay extra for the guy didn't pay extra for it so he pushed it and then his basic system didn't even work you can buy these electric cars they don't have the bugs out of the things and charge extra and extra with they're like bill gates you know you can't even buy this you can lease this from me per the year but you can't buy it because it's my property <laughs> All that money for a car, you know, and they don't even let you get to the systems that are in the system without paying extra. Fight this stuff, tooth and nail. They don't. They'll all start doing it. If one does it, they'll all start doing it. So fight it tooth and nail. Don't accept this kind of crap. Don't buy their cars. Tell the companies, you're going to charge us that. We'll go buy somebody else who doesn't charge for that. Because if one doesn't get away with it, they'll all start rolling down. They're greedy. They'll get even greedier. So. Stop them in their tracks. Don't let them continue to flow along with this. Well, you got to pay extra for this every year, extra for that. No, don't accept this crap. Because if you do, they'll keep charging. Bill Niles says, what do you think of the undercoatings of special materials used by some companies like NHOU that apply it? Is it worth the money to have this done? I live in the Northeast. Depends on a car you have. Take a late model Toyota. Right? When they build them, they put them in a bath, and that has electrostatic paint that even goes inside the frame, because the frames have holes in them for that, and it electrostatically bonds to the metal with primer paint that doesn't rust at all. I don't see those things rust. On a Toyota, you'd be wasting your money. It doesn't need it. But if you're talking about a Ford, Chrysler, Chevy, yes. They need better protection because they aren't protected as well. They weren't built as well. Now, I realize one thing, though. If your car's already started to rust, it is a complete waste of time because rust happens from the inside out. And if you coat rust, it'll just seal the rust in and it'll rust out even faster. My sister-in-law had a Ford Pinto in Buffalo and it was rotting there. Then she drove it down when they moved to Houston. Well, cars generally don't rust in Houston, but she brought one already rusty and it is so humid in Houston all the time, being on the Gulf Coast, it rusted so much the door fell off of it. So once they start to rust, too late then. Scotty, what do you think of the Subaru Brat? Well, they were interesting. You know, they were little pickup trucks and they had a little fiberglass seat in the bed. And there was a reason behind that. They put the fiberglass seat in the bed because at the time they said the Japanese are dumping cars in the United States. They put a tariff on the pickup trucks, right? So what did they do? Put a seat in the back and said, well, no, this is, this is SUV. It's got a seat in the back. And they got away with it not being a pickup truck. Now, they were fine little pickup trucks. They were cheap little things. You know, they rode around like little buckets, clangity clang, but they could run a long time. They were they were interesting vehicles. Eventually, you know, a lot of laws changed. And I'm sure a lot of places were like, you can't have people sit in the bed of a pickup truck. They'll get killed. It's not safe. Blah, 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 blah. But that's why they had the seats in them, was to bypass an import tax that they had on pickup trucks. But they were decent little trucks. Now, most of them are all worn out. Or what happened to where I I lived up north when people had it was they just rusted away and rotted away because they had very poor undercoating they just rusted. Edgar Garcia says what's your take on used salvage cars are there any pros here's the thing why is the car salvaged in the first place now sometimes you might get lucky I had a guy bring me a car last year here and it was a beautiful car and he bought it at one of these big salvage places right but he knows cars so he went to them and there were acres of them there and he looked at his and it said it was the frame was bent and all of a sudden he crawled and the frame wasn't bent. The frame hadn't been damaged. It was just a mistake by the insurance company. Somebody ripped somebody off probably somewhere, right? And he bought this thing for like twelve five, and he got offered like $30,000 three months later from Carvana because it wasn't wrecked. They looked at it and they offered, he didn't sell it to him at the time. He might have now. I'll have to ask him when he comes. He's coming in a few weeks. See if he did sell it and make money on it. But normally salvage cars, they're totaled by an insurance company for very good reasons. Do you want to buy one? A lot of them are flood cars. Now, as a mechanic, I might be able to get a flood car going, but then six months down the line, all the electronics might go, if it was salt water, it's going to be seeping into all the control units, all the computer modules. Some cars have 56 computer modules. All the wiring connectors can be crawling, then the car goes, woo, all this crazy crap happens because you got a flooded car. So usually it is not a good idea. Hugo Z says, I got 06 Acura TL, 225,000 miles. I have no history of timing belt service. Should I 
do it or leave it. I'll definitely want to do it. 225,000 miles. One, you don't want to be stranded. You don't want to ruin an engine over some stupid thing. If it's a V6 engine and it's an 06 Acura, a timing belt on it, not a timing chain. And I would definitely change. It could be what? 16 years old. Go ahead and change it. You got 225,000 miles. I would change the water pump too because the water pump drives off of it and you don't want that. If that breaks, the timing belt breaks on you. Go, I definitely would if you're planning on keeping the car any length of time. John Ehrman says, I got 2015 Lexus GS 350. Haven't done a tune-up. 80,000 miles. Is it easy to change out the spark plugs? Yes and no. <laughs> The front three are simple. You can get them off in five minutes. But the back three, you got to take the intake manifold off. It is a royal pain in the rear end. If I were you, I'd take out the three front ones and I'd look at them. And I would measure the gap. And if they were still within spec, I would just leave them all. Because a lot of those come with iridium plugs. They can sometimes last 200,000 miles or more. And taking that intake off is a very expensive job. If you're going to pay a mechanic and if you do it yourself, you're going to need some special tools to get in the little nooks and crannies to take it all apart. You're going to have to buy gasket kits. It's a pain in the rear end. And you might not need them anyway. You want to have them all exactly worn the same or the engine will run unevenly. Realize that. Doug Nuts says, Scotty, what do you think about AMC American Motor Cars? Are they well built? All right. Well, <laughs> interesting company. You know, they were in Indiana, right? They made some weird cars. Uh, some people were nuts about them. Gremlins. And some people thought they're the ugliest thing. Some of them are collector's items now. Now, they were okay built cars, but their problem was when they really tried to start going, all this anti-pollution crap started up in the 70s. And so they had kind of underpowered cars to begin with. And when they put the pollution controls, they were even worse. So what happened was Chrysler bought AMC. And the only reason they bought AMC was to get the Jeep name. They make the Jeeps and they stopped making all the AMC cars. And that was the end of any of their cars. Now, they weren't horrible cars and they're kind of coming back. Some people collect them. There's guys that show them and they're okay. You know, they're phenomenal gas hogs because they're 70s cars. But if you like them, you can find one that isn't rusted out. If you're going to buy one, look at the frame, look at the whole body, look at everything. If it's all rusted, run away. It's useless. It's worth nothing. But if you could find an old barn find you and you like it, you can have some fun with it. You can, you can still get a lot of parts for them. Santi says, my car keeps getting misaligned. I took it to get aligned four times. I have a Subaru BRZ. What could the problem be? Well, one, if you live in a crappy area that's full of holes in the roads, it's going to just keep knocking it out. You got a BRZ, you're probably driving it reasonably fast and you hit big potholes and stuff, it's just going to knock it out. Now, I don't know if the guys that are aligned in it know what they're doing. Some guys don't know what they're doing and they say they do. Check your tires. You might have a problem with your tires and they're aligning it. You got a problem with your tires. It doesn't matter what your alignment does. It isn't going to fix a problem in a tire if they're worn out. I would start by going to a different place. A guy who knows what he's doing, who can check it all out, tell you the truth about it. Maybe something on the frame's bent. I don't know. But you need an expert because the only other reason to be going out is if you keep hitting gigantic potholes. And I mean, some places have crappy roads. There's nothing you can do about that. Well, it looks like the British are getting in electric cars. British Fault and Aston Martin plan a high performance EV battery that they can put in. If you know anything about the history of car, Aston Martin are rich boys cars. Only the ultra rich drive around in Aston Martin. So it only makes sense if you want to go really high tech, that's the company that's going to do it. Now, it may or may not affect us normal people who will never buy one of those things. Now, Aston Martin says by 2025, they want to have electric cars. Realize, you know, these companies are on the verge of bankruptcy all the time and then some rich guy buys it because he likes it and then, oh, I own Aston Martin, blah, blah, blah. But they're not really really mass produced cars that have any effect on the actual production of real cars that we drive every day. For example, this company British Volt that's working with Aston Martin, they already signed a contract with Lotus. Well, Lotus went bankrupt for a while. Now I guess they're back again, but Lotus has forever been on the verge of bankruptcy. It's a small company. You know, they don't even make their own engines. The little ones had little Toyota four cylinder engines. The bigger ones had Toyota V6 engines in them. I mean, it's kind of a hob higgledy piggledy put things together from all over the place. And not hilarious in these companies. They are borrowing money from somebody else. The British Volt Company itself just started a funding that they got 40 million pounds in to do research or stuff. You know, they're all playing with other people's money. And they got UK government backing that unlocks 1.7 billion pounds government money coming up now. You know, I mean, these guys with electric cars, they're just getting money from everybody. Be leery. I've been on the planet for 69 years, right? Guys that are gambling with your money, don't trust them 
as far as you can throw them. They promise everything, and then when it comes to fruition, hey, 2025, will they have any out? Will it be revolutionary? You know, people have been working on stuff like solid state batteries for decades, and they're nowhere near making a good one that works in a car yet. They always say, well, it's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. Just like when I was a kid. Oh, we're going to have flying cars just around the corner. There still are not any flying cars. And that was in the 1960s. That was a long time ago, right? 60 years ago. And they still don't have them. Maybe 60 years from now, they'll still be saying, well, solid state batteries are just around the corner, you know? Just give us a few more billion dollars to research it. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.